Great work. So far we define a curve which captures the overall variation in brightness. The brightness depends on the y-coordinate, or amplitude, of a curve. But remember, our goal is to capture the patterns at different resolutions. The first curve only captures variation at low resolutions. Think of it as a broad stroke. So we need to add higher resolution variation to our curve. These are the smaller details, or changes in the amplitude. To do this, simply add two curves together. For example, take our original curve and add it to the second curve, which would result in this final curve. Very cool. Mathematically, we are just adding the y-coordinates together. OK, we've updated our program so that we can try this out. At the top is the low resolution curve, same as the previous exercise. And below it is a new curve, which is created by squishing two copies of the original curve together. It's a higher resolution curve because it contains more detail. Call this our medium resolution curve. And we can keep doing this. Here we've added a third curve. It's defined by squishing two copies of the medium resolution curve together in the same way. This is our high resolution curve. It contains the most detailed variations. And at the bottom, we show the results of adding these curves together. I see you have amplitude sliders as well. That's fancy. Yes. This allows you to adjust how much that resolution contributes to the final curve. Meaning, if the amplitude slider is set to zero, then that resolution is ignored in the final curve. And if I ramp up, it really takes over. By the way, this process was invented by Ken Perlin in 1988. And this is why the variation is called Perlin noise. And his idea has been used in almost every computer-generated movie in the past 20 years. Now it's your turn to try this out. In the next exercise, we will test your understanding of these multi-resolution curves. And then we can move into higher dimensions. Do you have an anecdote about Perlin noise? Well, in addition to surface shading, we also use noise patterns to control our hair grooms. For example, we use Perlin and other types of noises to control the length of hairs, the width, the scraggle, clumping, and other parameters. You can see it in almost all of our hair grooms. Definitely Spot's hair is a good one to look at for that in The Good Dinosaur. Pretty neat.